Hey guys, welcome back for another one. I'm sorry about the long delay. I've been trying to get one out for a while now, but I've been really busy with stuff at university. Um, hopefully this one's worth the while. This one today I'm covering is interacting with the world and with stuff like redstone, um, which a lot of people aren't aware that you can do. I can go here. Hello gatekeeper. You can see he just flicks that switch to open the gate for me. I can, if I was to walk off and then come back. Well, what a troll. <laughs> but yeah, you can see that he flicks the switch every time I want to go through. If we look over the code to see what makes him do this, I'm using target. And so whenever he sees a target, and the target is a player, which is type 1. He will greet the person, set a temporary variable, and then hit the switch. And it's what's in this hit switch function that's interesting. Now, some of you might be thinking it's really simple because you've seen functions that you can get a block from the world and stuff like that. But sadly, it's not that simple. The way it was implemented by Nops means that every time you get a block, it takes a copy of the block and forgets the damage values. This can be seen here if I I've set this guy up with a quick code um, so that whenever I click on him he will get the block here and then he will tell me the item damage value which in a switch determines whether it's on or off. Damn it. <laughs> so if I interact with him you can see it's a zero and if I flip the switch, this should now mean that that value changes, but you can see it's still equal to zero. It just proves my point that it's not actually making an exact copy of this guy. And so what we want to do is we want to get the damage value. Um, you're not really meant to be able to do it with the code that's given to you, but you can do it. What he does, what Nops does, is he exposes the raw world and so using world.getmcworld we can then get the direct class from the Minecraft game and call functions that are in it. But the problem is those functions don't retain their names that Mojang have given them. Because Mojang don't want us stealing their code, they go through and they change all the names to all their functions to make it more difficult for other people to read. And so every time you go to call one of their functions it's you know looks a bit like that um, which is fine you can still use them but there is also another downside that every time the Minecraft version changes a lot of the time those will change as well so this I'm saying it now only works for 1.7.10 um, when later ones come out I will update the names and put them in the description but for now, the functions we want, I will go into another page and we will start writing code. So here's the code. I'm calling it, I'm storing the Minecraft world in a variable called w, just so I don't need to type world.gmc world every time. But you can see the function that I'm calling here is func 72805g. And now it's just called with three variables, the x, y, and z coordinates. So it's just like the world.get block, except this function is actually get block metadata. And so your metadata is the damage value that you're wanting. And so we can do a quick test to see if this works by just saying mc.say data. See now in every update you see it's 12, we flick this and it goes down to 4. Flick it and it goes up to 12 again. I'll just disable them for now. And so we can see there that it's actually bit number 3 that's changing. And you might be wondering where I got 3 from. But the way these damage value works is they're actually 4 bit numbers and they have a bit flag on them. I don't really want to go over how binary works, but I'll quickly cover it. Um, you'll have four bits, which it can either be ones or zero, 
And if it's a one, it means the bit is set. If it's a zero, it means it's not set. And if it's changing by a factor of eight each time, it means that the bit that we're wanting is the third bit. The third bit in binary is actually the value eight. And so now we know that's the one we want. So how do we use it? Well, I'm gonna quickly write up some code and I'll explain what I've done. Okay, here's my code. You can see I've implemented another function here with a weird name. What this function is, is set metadata. And so it's setting the metadata of this block and this is the data I'm giving it and this is another bit flag. I'll explain that in a bit. But what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if the bit is set by using and. And so this is a binary function. And so whenever you and something, if two bits are the same, then it's going to return true. If two bits are opposite or not the same, they'll return false. And so here I'm just checking to see if the eighth bit is set. Uh, if it is set, that means that the switch is switched down. And so I want the MPC to growl me and say, don't turn that on. And here's the crucial bit, is that I want him to then turn it off. And so here's the function I've used. It's func 72921c. And then I call it on that block. Um, I then, for the data, I'm using the exclusive or function, which actually is telling it to toggle that bit. And so because we know the bit's set, if we then toggle that bit, we're turning that bit off. And the final value is three. And so this is another bit flag. Flag one will cause a block update, which we want. And flag two will send the change to the clients, which we also want. So when you combine these two flags, you add them together and one plus two is three. And so we're using three here so that it's updated for both the server and the client. So now let's give this a test and need to enable them again. And he growls me, don't turn that on. So I try to turn it on again and he turns it off. So this is about as simple as an implementation as you could get. But there are a few things, a few downsides to this code I should tell you about first. If I add redstone here, you can see when I flick the switch, I turn it on, but when he turns it off, it doesn't turn off. And the reason this happens is because when I flick the switch, it updates this block, which then Minecraft will update the redstone behind it. But when he does it, he's only going to update this block and it won't carry that on. And so I can flick this and it's not going to update these, it will only update the blocks that are touching it. So if I have redstone down here, you can see he turns that one off, but not the back one. Most of the time you can get around this. Like here, with this gatekeeper, you can see the switch is right next to him here, which is directly touching this gate. Before, I had it on the wall behind the gate, and that caused problems because the power would not go through. And so, as long as you just have it directly touching redstone, it's fine, everything works. So there we have it. This is, was a simple tutorial, but hopefully it showed you two things that you can now do that you didn't know you could do beforehand. A recommendation though is to put this in a module somewhere, or at least rename the function so it's easier for you to remember. So that way you can call it whenever you want in code and you don't need to remember these numbers. A challenge for you that I would set is try use this to create something like wireless redstone. Because obviously you can read when a switch is flicked. And so if you really wanted to, you could then make as soon as you flick one switch, it also flicks another switch. See if you can do that. But for me, I think that's all I'm going to cover today. Sorry it was a short one, I uh, didn't have anything else to cover. Hopefully I've explained everything well enough that you can now go use this code in your own game. So that's all for today, hope you guys actually understood everything and I explained it well enough for you to go use it yourselves. Um, any suggestions for the next ones I'm open to, 
even if it's something no one's ever done before. I've always liked a challenge. So feel free to post those down in the comments. And I think that'd be it for today. Anything you would like to say, Peter? Uh, I don't know. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, sweet. Okay, then, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.